and three and two and one. Thank you for joining uh, after yesterday's video. Um, I tell you, we can all look at the same picture and different points of the picture will mean something to everybody. Look at an accident, everybody sees it a different way. You hear a message, you retell it a different way. When we looked at the word Gail Chang, I believe three people said that's Go Shen. That's Goshen. So since three of you saw it and I didn't, uh, I guess you gotta start here. So know that there's a Goshen, Indiana, a Goshen, a real Goshen that we're looking for, a Goshen, Connecticut, a Goshen, Indiana, a Goshen, New York. Goshen, Ohio, Goshen, Massachusetts, Goshen, Kentucky. So, looking for Goshen itself is going to be a mystery. So, maybe we should get away from that one. And uh, maybe it'll be better if we analyze some of this first. And again, I wouldn't be able to see this without your help. Okay, so this first one says Goshen Bible verses. States here 38 verses related and two definitions. Here we have a district in Egypt especially suitable for herds and flocks. The Israelites dwelt in exempted from plagues, a town and district of the tribe of Judah. It says a district in Egypt especially be suitable for herds to dwell in, and these are the scriptures they're going to use to prove that. Genesis 45 and 10, And thou shalt dwell in the land of Goshen, and thou shalt be near unto me, thou, thy children, thy children's children, thy flocks, thy herds, and all that thou hast, or all that thou have. Genesis 46 and 28, And he sent Judah before him unto Joseph to direct his face, unto Goshen, and they came into the land of Goshen. Genesis 47. And then Joseph came, and Pharaoh told, uh, excuse me, and told Pharaoh, and said, My father, my brethren, their flocks, their herds, and all that they have are come out of the land of Canaan, and behold, they are in the land of Goshen. And he took some of their brethren, now this is chapter 47, excuse me, verse 2 now, and he took some of his brethren, even five men, and presented them under Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto his brethren, what is your occupation? And they said unto Pharaoh, Thy servants are shepherds, both we and also our fathers. And more, and said moreover unto Pharaoh, For to sojourn in the land are we come. For thy servants have no pasture for their flocks, for the famine is sore in the land of Canaan. Now therefore we pray thee, let thy servants dwell in the land of Goshen. 
And Pharaoh spake unto Joseph, saying, Thy father and thy brethren are come unto thee, and the land of Egypt is before thee. In the best of the land make thy father and brethren to dwell. In the land of Goshen let them dwell. And if thou knowest any man, any men of activity among them, then make them rulers over my cattle. And Joseph brought in Jacob his father and set him before the Pharaoh, and Jacob blessed Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Jacob, How old art thou? And Jacob said unto Pharaoh, The days of the years of my pilgrimage are an hundred and thirty. Few and few and evil have the days and the years of my life been, and have not attained unto the days of years of life of my fathers in the days of their privilege. Excuse me, pilgrimage. Excuse me, pilgrimage. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from before Pharaoh. And Joseph placed his father and his brethren and gave them a possession in the land of Egypt, in the best of the land, in the land of Ramesses, as Pharaoh had commanded. And Joseph nourished his father and his brethren and all his father's household with bread according to their families. And there was no bread in the land for the famine was very sore, so that the land of Egypt and all the land of Canaan fainted by reason of famine. And Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan for the corn which they bought. And Joseph bought the money to the Pharaoh's house. And when the money failed in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, and all the Egyptians said unto Joseph, came unto Joseph and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in thy presence? For the money faileth. And Joseph said, Give your cattle, and I will give you for your cattle, if money faileth. And they brought their cattle unto Joseph, and Joseph gave them bread in exchange for horses, for flocks, and for the cattle of herds, and for the asses, and he fed them with the bread for all their cattle for that year. When that year ended, they came to him a second year and said unto him, We will not hide it from my lord how that our money is spent my lord also hath our herds of cattle there is not aught left in sight of my lord but our bodies and our lands therefore shall we die before thine eyes before excuse me both we and our lands by us and our land for bread and we and our land will be servants unto Pharaoh, and give us seed, that we may live and not die, that the land be not desolate. And Joseph brought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh. So now Pharaoh owns all of Egypt, for the Egyptians sold every man his field because of the famine prevailed over them. So the land became Pharaoh's. And as for the people, he removed them to cities. He moved them into cities. Isn't that what we what happened to us? We all got moved into cities. And for the people, he moved them to cities from one end of the borders of Egypt even to the other end thereof. Only the land of the priest bought he not, for the priests had a portion assigned to them from Pharaoh, 
and did, and did eat their portion which Pharaoh gave, therefore they sold not their land. When Joseph said unto the people, Behold, I have bought you this day and your land for Pharaoh, lo, here is the seed for you, and ye shall sow the land. And it shall come to pass in increase that ye shall give the fifth part unto Pharaoh, and four parts shall be your own for seed of the field and food, your food, and for them of your household and for food for your little ones. So, them of your households means what? The people that live there that are, are working with you, that don't have their own home? Today, it would be what? People you take care of or appliances that you use to keep your household up to date. So, the harvest is broken into five parts. Four parts is the person who takes care of the land to distribute throughout that portion of the land, and the, and the fifth goes back to Pharaoh. And they said, Thou hast saved our lives. Let us find grace in the sight of my Lord. And we will be Pharaoh's servant. And Joseph made it a law over Egypt unto this day that Pharaoh should have the fifth part except the land of the priest only, which became not Pharaoh's. And Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt, in the country of Goshen. And they, and excuse me, had possessions therein and grew and multiplied exceedingly. And Jacob lived in the land of Egypt Seventy years. So the whole age of Jacob was a hundred forty and seven. So I, I must have misread that earlier when he said he was a hundred already. Not going to even, it must be executive math. I'm just going to keep moving. And the time drew nigh that Israel must die. And he called his son Joseph and said unto him, Now remember, Jacob has a second name. It is Israel. And this is the moment that he feels it is time for him to die. He calls his son. And he says unto him, If now I have found grace in thy sight, put thee, I pray thee, thy hand under thy thigh and deal kindly and truly with me bury me not i pray thee in egypt but i will lie with my fathers and thou shalt carry me out of egypt and bury me in the land excuse me in their burying place and he said i will do as thou hast said so what does he want to be? He wants to be buried in the place, the cave of Machpelah. And he said, Swear unto me. And he swore unto him. And Israel bowed himself upon the bed, the, the head of the bed. Here is exempt from plagues. Exodus 8 and 22. And I will sever in that day the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there. To the end that thou mayest know that I am the Ishi in the midst of the earth. Exodus 9 and 26. Only in the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel were, was there no hail. Alright, so again, a hailstorm is 
not what we is literally a plague. If this is exemption from plagues and this verse comes up and they're talking about hail from snow, then right now we know when it hails, it's a it's a plague. So when they say there's golf balls, when they say it's fist ball fist size, that's a plague. A town and district of the tribe of Judah, Joshua 10 and 41, and Joshua smote from them from Kadesh Barnea, even unto Gaza, and all the country of Goshen, even unto Gibeon. Joshua 11 and 16, so Joshua took all the land, the hills, and all the south country, and all the land of Goshen and the valley and the plain and the mountain of Israel and the valley of the same. And in Joshua 15 and 51. And Goshen and Olon, Olon and Gilo, Gil, Gilo, 11 cities with their villages. All right, so let's go to uh, Land of Goshen. Uh, so it's named in the Bible as the place in Egypt given to Hebrews by the Pharaoh to Joseph, land which they later left Egypt at the time of the Exodus. It was the location in the eastern delta of the Nile, so... I don't know how true that is as we read, you know, it seems to be further down as they need to get their story say. Perhaps, now when you see perhaps, they're just, they're lying, they're just filling gaps that per, perhaps at or near Abar is the seat of the power of the Hyksos kings. So, they don't know who the Hyksos kings are, but they know where their seat of power was. So, you know, there's a lot of a lot of make beliefs in this. So here it states if the Septuagint reading, I guess some is correct, the word which in its Hebrew form has no known meaning. Alright, so it's again it's a city named by other people, so this is all bullshit. Egyptologists have suggested a connection with the Egyptian word quaz, meaning uninundated land, because Goshen was apparently the same region called by the Greeks the Arabian Nome, which had its capital at Pak Pakusa. Uh, the name represents the Egyptian. Quas, name of a town, derivative of pouring forth. They just say these things, you know. So, it was, uh, while not disputing the location, while not disputing, it gives a different origin of the name Gasum, the rulers of the Bedouin. Rulers, uh, Occupy the eastern delta from the seventh. So you know it's 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 really a bunch of nonsense when we know where we're looking and when they keep adding these narratives. Uh, according to Joseph, excuse me, the Joseph narrative of the book of Genesis. The sons of Jacob were living in Hebron, experienced a severe famine that lasted for years. Word has that Egypt was the only kingdom available to supply food, and thus the sons of Jacob journeyed there to buy goods. In the uh, second year of famine, the visor of Egypt Joseph invited the sons of Israel to live in the Egyptian territory where they settled in the country of Goshen. 
Goshen is described as the best land in Egypt suitable for both crops and livestock. It has been suggested that this location may have been somewhat apart from Egypt. Because Genesis states, ye may dwell in the land of Goshen, for every shepherd is an abomination unto the Egyptians. After the death of Joseph, those of his generation, the following generations of Israelites had become populous in number. The Egyptians feared the potential integration or takeover, so they enslaved the Israelites. 430 years later, to the day Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt from Goshen or Ramesses to Sakoth, the first way point of the Exodus, which they pitched at 41 locations after initially crossing over the, Na the Nile Delta to the east and then also crossing the Red Sea to the last station being the plains of Moab. So we read the word Nome earlier. It says in Egypt it's just a territorial division, nothing more. We go over to the Jewish Encyclopedia. There's nothing uh, different here. So Land of Ramesses, Land of Goshen, Gesem of Arabia, we just right. So, I mean, there's nothing really that stands out that talks about. where it is. So, we move on. Here's where we left off yesterday. You know, side of a cliff leads to its entrance, I believe. It's really hard to get uh, bearings on the whole situation because of just being pictures. Hard to really tell the size comparison of it, you know, the people around. Jail. Same place, ruins of jail. Place has got like four, four names. Five names. No, I know. I wonder if this is supposed to. Yeah, this is a walkway, right? Oh, wow, look at that. That's what this, wow, see? They don't want you to see this at this site. See the round alert? That would be where the water would store, I would guess.
<coughs> Interesting size place. Well, see with some of these trees you can see you can kind of see the size see it's right here we're next to a river All right here they call it bezelic caves right and it's right here at the same spot so again where would so let's go back one so there's that water Right, and this is this right here. Okay, so this building that's next to it is this long building right here. Excuse me. All right, here's the same two. This is them from, uh, looks like they're right about here taking the picture of these two. You know, you can see this is that cylinder right here. So this is the wall. This is the door that's right there next to the cylinder. Um, can't really tell where this part is, you know. So I guess this wall, this big wall right here, I guess this is here along the outside. So wall one would be out here and then wall two and then a third wall and then you can see the no that's i think that's part of wall two and then there's an inner castle like castle on a chessboard and then there's the center which would be the holiest of holies I can't tell which part of it this would be. Nothing beats this one. This one's like this one becomes like my favorite picture. Let's open that in a new tab. We'll look at that later. Okay, so now this makes sense. This is the other see that's the spherical building that's the long flat building and then see this is a walkway going through it i guess all right and then uh from this side you can see you can see the inner wall is busted from this side but the picture they keep showing you of the inner wall it's, it doesn't look busted from the other side so you can tell people came in and attacked from from this side So here's the inner wall looking like the chest board, uh, the, the castle, the chest, and this is the inner box. Hmm. See, on this side, it doesn't look like it's damaged, but when we saw that picture from the other side, you can see that it's all, the other two walls have fallen down on this inner, inner castle-like structure. See, here it is right here. It just doesn't look like it because we can't tell because the walls are busted down, and this is the centerpiece, the Holy of Holies. Or what we would perceive as the Holy of Holies. Now let's go backwards with the pictures. Now see that's the front side. Or that's the back side. And this is the front side. Wait, I messed up, didn't I? Yeah, I messed up. Oops. Hit the wrong button. Yeah, okay. See how this walkway is? You will walk up. And there, all the walls would be intact, so you would enter on this side, but you wouldn't be having direct entry into this. You know, this way, there's no entrance here, so you wouldn't be entering this way. Uh, 
elevation map of Gerritsen District. Okay, so that doesn't really look like an elevation map, does it? This looks like the one piece that wasn't destroyed, right? And see, there's a street, there's a street lamp right there. You can see, you know, so you have a, a contract to size. So it makes me wonder why this is all intact. You know, um, you can't tell exactly if it's the same site. Uh, you know, it's, it's interesting. You know, we've never seen this one. Oh, yeah, yeah. You actually, see, you know, see the comparison of size with this doorway here now. You know, uh, you can almost piece all this together. Almost. Hmm. Look at how this building resembles like one of our state buildings, right? You know, this is like, uh, like an older model, you know? It's got the brick underneath, the facade on top, the plaster facade on top. Yeohi, Yeohi. Mm. Little castle in there, isn't it? So, should I presume this is, this looks like some merry bullshit, doesn't it look like a little child on, like some breast or something, like a woman's head, some breast, a child, I don't know, I mean, I could just be saying, seeing some, you know. Some you know, shit scratched all through there. It looks like English, though. This looks like an A. This looks like a Z. That looks like an A. So, you, you can tell Americans have been there. Ha ha ha. Isn't this interesting? Four pillars with one on the inside. Uh, I wonder, see how equal these are? I wonder if these were windows and these were hollow. And when they say it's a forest. Okay. So, so we're getting a little broader here, I think. The different names coming here, it's the same. It's the this is the same. This is the same. Turpan and Turpan is the same, just
You know, it's funny that they got two different ways of spelling. I'm surprised nobody tried to just put a B in there. And... Excuse me. You know, it's a desert. A little weird. It just comes in blurry. You know, I can't tell what this is in the background. Okay. Who wants to go to China? I mean, wow. I mean, you know. <laughs> Look at the mountain in the background. So that had to be what's in the background of this right here. Maybe that bridge right there. Some of that nature. Doesn't look like the same part of the building though. And so the mountain's not in the background. So the mountain is uh, off behind the photographer, I presume, or to one side. So. As I said yesterday, the more that people, I didn't see that when we were looking through Wikipedia, the more that people deal with the history of uh, Genesis, the book of Jashir, the more this will make sense. All right, so if you sat in this long and you don't understand what's going on, this is Jerusalem. You've been told Jerusalem was destroyed, every part of it torn down. And yet and still, here is a model, a scale model of Jerusalem in the second temple period and see here are people walking next to the model to show you all right it's smaller than your house it's a, it's a it's a scale model but it's scaled down and then out here you can see towers and out here you can see the city the different sections of the city all right, these are people walking. This is scaled model, scaled down. Now, this is from a different angle, right? More of what the city looks like. So right here is the walkway right there. So that's the same thing that we see right here. Right on one side, you have the houses. On the other side, you have government buildings. One side you have houses, one side you have government buildings. So this is a close-up of this picture from a slightly different angle, like right about this position. All right? And so this picture, this is that separate road right there. Going down between the people, the government buildings on one side and the homes on the other side. Now, if you look back here, you have the same thing. You have the wall separating, let's say this is what you would call the holy section, right? And then out here, all these remnants of buildings are what they're showing you here with this scale model. Now, when we're looking at, say, this one, look at these towers that are linked right into the wall. Now, when we start going through these pictures,
you see the wall and you can see towers linked into the wall that's not the same place these four right pillars these look like windows Here's the wall, here's the tower right there next to the wall. This is what the equal. Is this a wall? Is this a tower above a wall? Wall, tower. I mean, you can see this, right? This part is the wall. These are the towers. You know, so. Now again, all this stuff, this is all in the same vicinity. It is all neighboring each other. No different than we start in the book of Genesis and we end in the book of Genesis. These same places are all talked about. They're related through one chapter uh, uh, excuse me one book alone so when you say china the land of shinar you know for the 80th time if, if shinar included both babylon babel and uruk then shinar broadly denoted both northern and southern babylonia did you hear that Shinar broadly denotes both southern and northern Babylon. It means Babylon's in Shinar. Just like it says when you're, it's, it's all introduced to you. Somebody listened to this story and said, no, no, no. I know of a tower somewhere just as bad. It's a different story. Shinar broadly denotes both North and Southern Babylon. Some believe Shinar to be in reference to the land that is now China. The very ancient Arabic name for China is Sin or Sinna. So <clears throat> this is just a broken record that cannot turn off. I'm going to say the same things to the same things keep popping up. The ruins of Karak, Karak Hoja, Karak Hoja, Karakosha, I don't know what's that, or Gao Cheng. Guchong, well, again, it is a miracle that people saw 
Goshen. That was way above my pay grade. That was over my head. When I saw one person say Goshen, I was like, you crazy. I saw a second person say Goshen. I was like, are they just asking that as a question? Or they, and then I saw a third, and I was just like, uh-oh. Better take heed. Go Shang, ancient city. Date from the initial Han Chinese conquest of the area in the second century BCE, located 46 kilometers southeast of Turpan on the edge of the Lop Desert. Karak Hoja is larger than Yark Hoto but rather less well-preserved. Originally established as a garrison town, it developed into a prosperous city by Tang times before being eventually abandoned in the 14th century, probably due to the combination of epidemic warfare and desertif desertification, desertification turned into a desert. In its prime, Caracojo was divided into three sections, outer city, inner city, and a palace. Dun, dun, dun. Again, what does that sound like to you? It says the same thing down here. And it just cuts off there. A palace and and a palace area is what was last there. All right, so then they gave us the name Caracojo. Type in Caracojo, it comes back as Gao Chain, right? So the so when it says here that it starts to thrive during the Tang Dynasty. Let's see where that was. Prosperous city by Tang times. As you see here, they are warring with the Tang. Now, as we go a little bit further, it goes into Gale Chang. Right. As people have said, Goshen. So all these names for it, remember, they all have the same sounds. They all are making the same sounds. You're talking about a Babylonian state where they cannot speak the same language because it's a curse, not because they're not trying. So it is the site of a ruined ancient oasis city on the northern rim of the inhospitable Taklamakak, Taklamakan, Taklamakan Desert in the present day Xinjiang, China. The site is known also in published reports as whatever. Cuckoo. It's known as Cuckoo. During the Yun Dynasty and the Ming Dynasty, and King and Queen Ming, Gao Chan was Chang was referred to as Hela or Hela Hez U, something like that. So. Now what they've done is they've given us a little bit of ammo. Ayo has Lou. We start looking around there. So just want to make sure everything's loaded up. The ruins are about 30 kilometers southeast of modern Turpan. The archaeological remains just are just outside of the modern town of Gao Chang in a place called something or another. 
or something or another by local residents. See the work of Albert something on the external links below. Artistic depictions of the city have been published. Gail Chen is considered in some sources to have been a Chinese colony. That is, it is located in the region otherwise occupied at the time by Western Eurasian peoples. So, again, they say Western Eurasian. We're just going to keep reading. A busy trading center. It was a stopping point for merchants, merchant traders traveling on the Silk Road. It was destroyed in wars during the 14th century and old palace ruins and inside and outside cities can be still seen, still be seen today, excuse me, along with other sites along the historic Silk Road. Gail Chang was inscribed in 2014 in the UNESCO World Heritage List as the Silk Road routes, the routes network of Chang, Changan, Tianshan Corridor. So, near Gao Chang is another major archaeological site, the Astana Tomb. The cemetery 30 says 23 miles southeast of Turpin. So, all these things are like right in the same spot. The history. The earliest people known. All right, so history of the Jeshi, 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 all right, kingdom. Now, and early Han. Chinese rule. Now remember Han's a dynasty and they don't say the Han Kingdom. The earliest people known to have lived in the area were the Jeshui, Shui, also known as the Geshui. The region around Tufan was described during the Han Dynasty as being occupied as by the Jeshu while control over the region sway between the Han Dynasty and the the Zhang Jiang Nu. Now the Jiang Nu, the tribal confederation of nomadic peoples who, according to ancient Chinese sources, inhabited the eastern Eurasian slopes. Right? So you see there is some fighting going on between these two groups and this kingdom is doing its thing. Yao Chan was built in the first century BC. It was an important site along the Silk Road. It played a key role in the transportation hub in western China. The Jishui leaders later pledged their allegiance to the Han Dynasty in 327. The Chang Commandary uh, was created by the former Laing La under the Han Chinese rule of the Zhang Dui. The Chinese set up a military colony garrison on the, on, excuse me, and organized the land into multiple divisions. Han Chinese colonists from the Hexi region and the Central Plains also settled in the region. After the fall of the Western Jin Dynasty, Northern China split into multiple states, including the Central Asian Oasis. Gao Cheng was ruled by the former Laing, former Quinn, Northern Lying, and as part of a commandary in 383, General Lu Going of the former Quinn seized control of the region. 423, remnants of the Northern Ling, led by Juku Wau and Juku Anuhu fled to Gao Qing where they would not hold power until 460 and they conquered they were conquered by the Rohran cognate Rohran cognate another version of the story says it's three excuse me 439 a man named Ashnia led 500 families from Gashnu 
excuse me, Ganshu to Gao Chang in 460. Rohran forced them to move to Altai. Altai is the mountains. They became the Ashina uh, clan formed by the Gu formed the Guk Turk cognate. All right, six dynasties to have found tombs contained dumplings. Wonton stuffed fat stufflings. All right, so isn't that interesting? Uh, let's go to Jushi real quick. Oh, we got that already. All right. So, Gale Chan Kingdom. Not really giving us too much about the Gale Chan itself, is it? And the tank. So let's go over here real quick. Let's put this back to here. And then let's go here. And the Jushu Kingdom. Now. Says. They were a people who established a kingdom during the first millennium in the Turpin Basin. The kingdom included the area of. Aideen. Aideen Lake. Eastern Taishan, Taishan range during the second, the late second and first, the early first century BCE, the area was increasingly dominated by the Han Dynasty and the northern neighbors of the Jushu, the Jiang, Jiang Nu. Now, again, if you go to the Bible, it's going to tell you. In this so-called land that they're living in that they have problems with Canaanites from the north and from the south um, so became one of the many minor states of the western regions of the Han Dynasty China the Jushu capital J-O-E J-O-E letter known as Yark Oto or Yark Yargual was destroyed in a Mongol attack in the 13th century. Contemporary Chinese sources suggest that Joshu were Caucasoid in appearance. They might have been of the Tolcha Tocharian peoples and spoke in one of the associated now again it says they might have been it's suggested so yeah it again they're they're just adding that um it, it's it's kind of interesting <laughs> again you're you're in the caucus you're in the area that they claim is the caucus area you would already expect them to say is it is caucus, not that it's suggested, but it, you know, it, 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 it doesn't hold up because there is no caucus kingdom using those kinds of words at the time. According to these two uh, researchers, the earliest accounts of the Jeshu report them to have lived in tents, followed the grasses and waters and had considerable knowledge of agriculture they owned horses cattle camels sheep goats they were proficient with bows and arrows the jushi and the kingdom of the core crow ran crow ran they were linked in the account of the jiang kui now you see all those people got dark skin. Okay. Was a Chinese official and diplomat who served as the imper imperial envoy to the outside world of China. Now either everybody in China had darker skin at that time or something weird's going on with the artist. You know. But says that in or about 60 BC, the Han 
ruled at the time of M all right so it says uh in or about 60 bc the han ruled at the time of M emperor john or sean or han defeated the young new horses at the battle of jushi during the Han Jiang War. Afterwards, the main part of the Jushi land was divided into two states, a southern area controlled by Han, who referred to it as near Jushi or anterior Jushi, and the a northern area known to the Han as further Jushi or posterior Jushi that was dominated by the Jiangnu. Near Jushi was administrated by the Han from a capital at Jeoi. And so again, this reminds me of the story of the Book of Kings, where you have uh, what the southern kingdom working with uh, Syria, and you have the northern kingdom uh, working with uh, Assyria and Pul, uh, Pulu of Assyria, Tigre Pilva, comes and he kills uh, Rezin uh, uh, in Damascus. This reminds me of all this, you know. And of course, these names aren't used, but it seems like the same situations are being used. <clears throat> The capital of further Jushi appears to have been called Yuli or right Jerusalem, right? Yuli or Yuali, which is located about 10 kilometers north of Jishima. Now again, where do you see all these J's used in the language of Asian people? You kind of don't, do you? Archaeology discovered a 27-year-old 20, tomb in 2008 of the Yinghai tombs. The ancient cemetery has been attributed to the Jushi or the pure cure, precursor culture, the culture that came before. The grave contains the remains of a shaman who had blue eyes and light-colored hair. So they already know it's not the Jushi. That's why they wrote a precursor culture so you know there's a lot of lies in here why, why why they choose certain words to build sentences so it says near the shaman's head and foot were large leather basket and wooden bowl filled with 780 nine grams of dried cannabis all right so near the head and near the foot were baskets filled with cannabis weed th cbccs were inner feeties and headsies all right so it turns out this precursor culture that they have a shaman is a woman, and they found her, and her head was full of lice. So they don't even name it the same shit. They just have another mummy, right? And they claim it's, you know, the same thing, but it's not. They're not saying it's the Yang Hai tomb. They're saying it's the Tarim mummies. It's all right. And when you read this, it don't say that they're found in the same place, but they're attributing these mummies to be these people so they can say blue eyes and light color hair so that they can say that they were caucasoid in appearance because they're freemasons and this is what they do they work for the devil all right the ruins of yale yale city ruin uh, city of turpin uh, capital of told Charan, kingdom of Jushi, it was a natural fortress located atop of a steep cliff 
on a leaf-shaped plateau between two deep river valleys and was an important stop along the Silk Road. <sighs> Han Shu discussing jail alludes to a conventional reading of the name as meaning river junction. King of Nero Jushi lives in the town of Jao. A river divides into two and surrounds the town, which is why it's called Jao. Lionel Gills records the following names of the city, uh, the ancient capital of Trafan, Jushi, and the royal court of the anterior inner Jushi, later Han. Gail Chang suggests that the name was uh, Yarkoto is a combination of Turk and Mongolian words. So that's the Turk and Mongolian name for it. Being derived of ravine and town. Ravine town. All right. The model of the plateau on which J.O. is located. You see this shit right here? How it's elevated like that? And that's something. So, history of it. There's an important site on the Silk Road. Zhao Prefect uh, Tang Dynasty. It was made the seat of the new Zhao County from 640 until 658. Also the seat of the protector of the general of the western regions of the high level military post of the Chinese military commander posted in the west. Since the beginning of the 9th century, it had became Zhao Prefect prefecture of the Yergrayer cognate oh, oh boy. Uh, until their kingdom was conquered by the Kyrgyz or whatever uh, after the year 840 the Yarkoto was built to, again that's the that's the people that destroyed it naming it was built on the plateau and this plateau is 30 meters high the city was built on a large islet 1650 meters in length 300 meters wide at this point in the middle of the river which formed natural defenses so that's this description right here the length of it and the width of it and the height. So 30 meters high, right? 1650 length, 300 wide, 30 meters high. And river on both sides. So you had to deal with the river just to get up the sides, which would explain why the city lacked any sort of walls. Instead, steep cliffs are more than 30 meters high on either side of the river act as natural walls. The layout of the city had eastern and western residential districts while the northern city was reserved for buddhist sites of temples that's what they're adding all of a sudden and didn't say anything about that before along with this there are notable graves and the ruins of a large government office in the southern part of the eastern district and it had a population of 7,000 according to the tang dynasty records it was finally abandoned after its destruction during an invasion by the Mongols led by Genghis Khan in the 13th century. Ruins were visited by the archaeologist and explorer Earl, Earl Stein, who described a maze of ruined dwellings and shrines carved out of the, out of the most part of Lois soil, I don't understand that, but explained that a combination of local farmers used the soil in government interference in his activities prevented examination. Okay, so the government and the local farmers prevented him from examining it. The site was partially evacuated in 1950 and it's been protected by the government since 1961. Now, excuse me, there are now attempts to protect the site and other Silk Road ruins since it's being protected by UNESCO. All right, so then we have the Mongols.
No. <laughs> there is an East Asian ethnic group native to Mongolia and to China's Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region. Mongols are the principal members of more large family of Mongolic peoples. The Oi rats, oh yats, I don't know, in Western Mongolia as well as the Buryats, Buryats, and the Kalm, Kalmyaks of Russia. They're classified either as distinct ethno linguistic groups or subgroups of Mongols. Mongols are bound together by a common heritage and ethnic identity. Their indigenous dialect, dialects are collectively known as Mongolian language. The ancestors of the modern-day Mongols are referred to as Proto-Mongols. Broadly defined, the term includes the Mongols proper, also known as the Paul Kahalik, Kahalika, Kahala, Kahalika, right? The Buryats, the Ori, Oriets. I'm sure that's supposed to be or eights, not I rats, right? Uh, it could be I, 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 I know, like Iraq, I rats, I rates, or uh, and the uh, calm. Yik, calm yik, the southern Mongols, the later comprises of the Abaga, Ab, Ag, An, R, Abaganar, Abaganars, A, do you say, Ah, 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 Hans, the Ba, Ah, Rains, Ba, Ah, Rains, uh, go, Gorlos, uh, Jalades, Jaruds, Kiss, Kiss Higton, Kahuchid, Uchid, Kahuchid, Mu, Um, Mumuy, and Yang and Mu. Mumuyengen, Mumuyengen, Onuigud, uh, so sh whatever, N yeah, whatever, the, yeah, uh, yeah, designation Mongol briefly allows you to not have to go through all those names in the 8th century records of Tang China to describe a tribe of Shwili. Manchuria. Look at that shit. All this stuff, and now the Mandarin's name come in. Now the Mandarin's in China. Right? And what do they call them? Shwee-wee. 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 It resurfaced in the late 11th century in the Cahitan rule also, the Lao Dynasty, after the fall of the Lao in 1125, the Ham, Kahamag, Mongols became the lead tribe on the Mongolian plateau. However, their wars with certain Jershin ruled Jin dynasties and the Tartar confederations had weakened them. In the 13th century, the word Mongol grew into an umbrella term for a large group of Mongolic-speaking tribes united under the rule of Genghis Khan. Various times, Mongolic peoples have been equated with Scathians, the Magog and the Tunguskic peoples. Based on the Chinese historical text, the ancestry of the Mongolic peoples can be traced back to Donggu, is a tribal confederation of nomadic people that was first recorded 
from the 7th century BCE and was destroyed by the Zhonggu in 150. And they lived in northern Hebi. Now look, we're familiar with this, right? In southeastern Inner Mongolia and in the western part of Liaoning. Let's start there. Let's go back to this. A nomadic confederation occupying Mongolia and Manchuria. The identity of Jiang is still debated today, although some scholars maintain that they were proto Mongols. They were more likely a multi ethnic group of Mongolic and Turkic tribes. It has been suggested that the language of the Huns was related to the Jiang Nu. The Dong Hu, however, can be much easier. Easier, easy, easily labeled. I don't know why I keep trying to throw er on there. Labeled to the Proto-Mongols, since the Chinese histories trace only Mongolic tribes and kingdoms, the Zhangbi and the Wahang, Wahuang peoples. From them, although some historic texts claim a mix of Zhanggu Donggu ancestry for some tribes, i.e., the Kahidan. All right, so. From that, from the heavy, and they're from inner. So when the okay, so the eastern and the inner meet, then made a tribe. Right? The Dongu are mentioned by Shimaquan is already existing in Inner Mongolia, north of Yan, 699 to 623 BCE, with the Shamrong uh, mentions the Yi and the Zhushu in the Book of Zhao. Excuse me, Zhao, not Zhu. Classic mountains and sea indicates the Dongu were active during the Shang Dynasty. All right. Okay, so I'm going to skip down a little bit. All right, three prominent groups split from the GNB state, as recorded by the Chinese histories. The Ru Ran, the Ru Ran cognate, right? So they claimed by some to be the Pannonian Avares. The Kahitan people and the Suiwele Subtribe called the Swili Mangu, it held the original of the Gangashid Mongols. Besides the Jambi, the three Jambi groups, there were others. Okay, well, we're just gonna scroll down. So, if you're watching it, you want to pause it and read it yourself. I don't think there's anything here I want to. Really touch on the Mongol Empire, the destruction of the Uyghur cognate by the Kyrgyz resulted in the end of the Turk dominance of Mongolia, according to his just historians. The Kyrg, Kyrgyz, whatever, were not interested in assimilating newly acquired land, instead, they control local tribes through various manaps, tribal leaders. The Kahitans occupy the area vacated by the Turk Hagurians, uh, bringing them under their control. The Yeniasi, something like that, state was centered on Caucasia, right? Circassia, Caucasia. And they were expelled from Mongolia by the Kahitans in 924. Beginning of the 10th century, the Kahitans, under the leadership of Abijah, something like that, prevailed in several military campaigns against the Kang dynasties, border guards, and the Xi and the Suiwe, Suiwe, whatever, and the Jurchen nomadic tribes. The Kahitan led uh, royalty, led by Yelu Dashi fled west through Mongolia after being defeated by the Jurchens, later known as the Manchu, and founded the Quara 
Kahiti. Kwakwe Kahiti in eastern Kazakhstan. Or Kazakhstan. While still maintaining control over western Mongolia. In 1218, Genghis Khan incorporated the Quara Kahiti, after which the Kahitan passed into obscurity. Some remnants surfaced as the Kwitlu Kahitan dynasty, excuse me, Khanid in Iran, geez, some Iranian groups, right? Oh, it's just on and on and on with this. So, in Iran, the Dai Kahiti in Afghanistan, with the expansion of the Mongol Empire, the Mongolic people settled over almost all Eurasia and carried the military campaigns into the Adriatic Sea. In Indonesia to Indonesia, Java Islands, from Japan to Palestine, which is Gaza, they simultaneously became Padishahs of Persia. Um, not showing me right. Sovereign titles in Persia, emperors in China, and great khans of the Mongols. And one became Sultan of Egypt. And the Mongolic peoples of the Golden Horde established themselves to govern Russia by 1240. In 1279, they conquered the Song Dynasty and brought all of China proper under the control of the Yun Dynasty. From Ching Chinggis up high down to the common people, all were shaven in the style Pagius with as with small boys in China they leave three locks one hanging from the crown of their head when it has grown some they clip it the strands lower on both sides they plate it to hang down on their shoulders now again <laughs> the word locks and plates, you know, that that's usually Afro Asiatic hair, you know. So Chinggis went up and down, high and low, to the common people, and they all had to look like him. All right, uh, we're going to stop there. This place is pretty old, but at least it didn't rebuild itself and this it left the same character. You still see a lot of the bricks are worn down, but at least it's original. So this is the big temple as they call it. This is where the monks stayed and at the center street it had there used to be a giant Buddha statue, it's now gone.
this is where the Buddha did stand. This is an ancient wall here of the city of Guangzhou, Guaxin. Where you say it? Not Guangzhou. Guangzhou is over by Hong Kong. Guaxin. This is the Flaming Mountain here. Their turf farm. <laughs> 